Welcome to this video. I'd like to cover a flow analysis today and how to do it, especially for those who have never done a flow analysis before, have no idea where to get started. Uh, the first step is to develop something in SolidWorks that you would like to flow. In this case, I've made a very simple inertial separator. Uh, the idea is you have perhaps dirty air that comes into this hole and it spins around inside of the chamber. The heavy stuff gets pulled to the outside. The light stuff, the light air, the clean air uh, can move straight through the center and the inertia of the objects can fall through the bottom. Uh, if I wanted to test to see how this flows, uh, personally I prefer to put it into an assembly. So I'm going to say make assembly from part and this is of course personal preference you can do this in part if you'd like uh, what i'm going to do is first of all if go to my flow simulation tab this is something you have to pay extra for if you have solidworks so it's an add-in and you can change um, if you've installed flow simulation you can add and take away from these tabs here what you have and open up the wizard and it has to be a saved document so let's go ahead and save that Perfect. Okay, now that this is saved, I'm going to go to the wizard on the flow simulation tab. You can name your project if you'd like and add a comment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say next. I like inches, pounds, seconds. You can do the metric system if you'd like as well. You can determine how you want to have all of your units measured but with inches, pounds, seconds, that satisfies my needs. Since none of these concern basic flow, I'm going to skip over this. I'll cover them in another tutorial, perhaps. Uh, I want to measure air. Notice uh, SolidWorks gives you a lot to choose from, and I can do <clears throat> something like air coming in one side and carbon dioxide coming in another side, so you can choose more than one fluid as well. A diabatic wall is a theoretically perfect wall and uh, there's some other options, but I'm sticking with Diabatic and I keep this tutorial basic. Finally, you can adjust your parameters, but again, cover that in another tutorial. If you're doing this for the first time, just leave it the way it is. It should be fine. This is how much resolution you have. This is more processor intensive, and this is less realistic. So choose a balance that works for you. This is just fine for me and what I want to do today. Okay, so now it gives me a, a box that says this is not watertight. It is very strange and somewhat counterintuitive, but you have to make this watertight around all the openings that air is going to go in and out of. And that's so SolidWorks can say, well, I, I can measure a set volume that way. So I've got this Create Lids tool. If you ever need that, it's one of the tabs up here. It should be this lid guy right here. I'm going to go to all my openings and select the face of each opening that I want to have a lid in contact with. Perfect. Now I've got a watertight model and SolidWorks says, oh, something changed. So you want to say yes, because it's going to cal make calculations on the volume of what's being flowed according to what just changed. Uh, pretty much always say yes. And then it says, uh, do I want to reset the mesh settings? Also say yes to that, as finite element analysis uses a mesh to determine a lot of different things, uh, specifically how it's going to flow. So it's very important to have your mesh up to date. So one other thing I'm going to do is turn this transparent, and that way I can see the flow that's happening inside. All right, now that I've got a hollow transparent object, let's start this flow analysis. Notice the wizard gave me this tab right here. First thing that I'm going to do is uh, make sure I've got my input data, everything, how I want it. The computational domain is this box, and this box tells me that anything within this box will be part of the flow analysis, and anything outside of the box will not. Uh, I can see that everything that I want to flow is inside the box, not that I'm an inside-the-box thinker. So I'm going to hide this box, and that will make it much easier to look at. 
Um, another thing is boundary conditions. I'm going to say insert a boundary condition. And this is, a boundary condition is where you have an input or an output of some kind. In this case, I want my fluid, in this case air, to come in through this hole. So I choose the face of the lid that is flowing the air. In this case, this face. And I'm going to say inlet mass flow. And let's say 0 0.01 pounds per second of air. Kind of a lot of air. We'll see how it turns out. So it spirals in here. I'm going to have another output condition. Let's say that this vents to atmospheric pressure. I'm going to insert another boundary condition on this face. And I'm going to say that this face is atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is right here. And I'm going to do the same on the bottom face. So now we're environment pressure on all of these openings. I like that view right there, if I can get it. All right. I can make certain goals as well. Um, let's say that I want to know something specific about this face. Uh, let's say in, I'll insert a global goal. Let's say in an arbitrary situation, I would want to know the density, the average density of the fluid that is exiting this face. So when I insert goals, all I have to do is uh, select the face that I want. And I'll say, insert global goals. Let's say I want to know the temperature uh, of the fluid. Then I would say, that, let's go average temperature. Boom. So now I have a goal to know the density of the fluid and the temperature of the fluid. So in other words, a goal is something that I can specifically track throughout the study that will give me some information that I want. Uh, so let's go ahead and run our results move this bar back over here, maybe give myself a little bit more room to see what's going on on this window. I'm just going to uh, project, run. Mesh, solve, good, new calculation. So this is a little bit RAM and processor heavy. Depending on the processor and RAM that you have, you might have a, a part too complicated to <laughs> to flow, uh, you might have something something that's really hard to calculate. This is the, the calculation running right now and how many iterations it's running. If you choose a really fine mesh, it takes a lot more calculation and a lot more RAM. I'll go ahead and fast forward this. Okay, now that the solver is finished, I just click the red X. I'm done with it for now. I'm going to uh, look at the results that I can look at. I'll do the first thing is a cut plot. That's one of my favorites. I'm going to insert a cut plot and uh, this is a fine plane to insert that cut plot on. And I can change uh, what variable I want. So if I want to see the pressure at any point on this plane, then I can choose pressure or I can choose a velocity. I think velocity is important for an inertial separator. Uh, so I'll click the check mark there and it inserts this nice plot and uh, I'll move it up here so you can read the numbers. So I can see that this is in inches per second and that's because I chose as my unit in the beginning. Now if I want to uh, view different parts of this cross section, I can do that as well. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is to right click and play and it will sweep this cut plot back and forth so you can see the velocity at every given point and at every given cross-section on that plane. If this isn't enough detail for me, you'll notice this is a quite a high number. I can rescale it according to different maximums to get a better uh, idea of what the distribution of velocity is. I can also say that I want my maximum to be 100 and just type in 
a maximum anywhere. I'm going to go say, how about a thousand? That's probably a nice view. So you can tell that it, the higher velocities are on the outside, so I get a very high velocity in the input. And as it travels down the line and begins to spin, the fastest places are towards the outside. The slowest places are towards the inside. That's what I want because I'm playing off the inertia of the heavy particles. I want them to be moving fast to so stick to the outside. Uh, notice I get an acceleration through this top pipe up here as well. Uh, so that's one way to look at how it's going to flow. Um, one of my favorite is flow trajectories. So I'm going to get rid of my cut plot. You can hide it or do whatever you like with it. Uh, flow trajectory, I'll just insert a flow trajectory here. And uh, I want to do the face where the flow is coming in here. And pipes are fine. How many pipes do I want? I'm going to say 35. That's a nice number. Again, whatever you like. And I'll be measuring velocity. It runs a calculation to insert the pipes. And you can see the trajectory of flow here. Uh, again, it's going very fast because it's all towards the outside. And then it slows down as it moves up. So what's happening here is... Uh, as the color changes, the velocity changes. And I again can reset the scaling on this so that it can, be, it can become a little bit more friendly. I think, I, I think this is a very nice um, scale right here to show what's going on. With my flow trajectory, I can also, there we go say play and it will show a demonstration of how it's flowing kind of fun to watch a little bit mesmerizing i can also uh, go into my goal plots And uh, just by showing all, I have the, <laughs> the values and the criteria and everything that I was looking for from the beginning. Um, so I can track my goals as well. That's a very basic overview of a flow analysis. We'll get more into it whenever I find time. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. That's the best way to help me back. And I'll catch you next time.